Uh, we are still planning for a very significant cyclone event to hit the coast around the Cairns Innisfail region. Uh, that means that the councils in Cairns, the Cassowary Coast, uh, Hinchinbrook and Townsville are all in the process of relocating residents in the high risk area in waterfront and uh, low lying areas. Uh, at this stage, there hasn't had to be any mandatory evacuations, uh, but uh, we will continue to advise you throughout the afternoon. As I advised this morning, there's been quite a lot of work done this morning uh, on uh, the Cairns Base Hospital. A decision has been made to fully evacuate the Cairns Base Hospital and the Cairns Private Hospital. Uh, approximately 205 uh, patients will be evacuated from Cairns Base Hospital and 50 from the private hospital. Uh, the Air Force have confirmed that they have sufficient aircraft to undertake the task and evacuations will therefore commence uh, in the the early evening. The, uh, aircraft, uh, the Air Force aircraft have to be fully fitted out this afternoon and then transported to Cairns. Uh, this, uh, all Brisbane hospitals have been put on what's known as a brown, uh, code brown alert. Uh, this requires those hospitals to make sufficient arrangements to accept incoming patients. Uh, they will do this wherever appropriate by cancelling elective surgery where possible and by uh, early discharges where they can. Uh, I'll invite uh, the Chief Health Officer to make some further comments, but I'm advised that across all of the hospitals in the Brisbane and South East area, uh, these patients can be easily accommodated and there is an, an officer in charge at the receiving end of ensuring uh, that patients are effective, efficiently um, uh, allocated uh, this evening when they arrive in Brisbane. This is a very big exercise and uh, uh, we're checking the records but we're not sure that we've ever totally evacuated uh, a big regional hospital like this uh, in Queensland's history. Uh, as I said, I'll invite the Chief Health Officer to make some comments about that further. Uh, additional flights uh, have been uh, going into the region and there will be further uh, attempts to get further flights in there this afternoon. Uh, for example, Jetstar, I know, has had two extra flights into Cairns. Qantas has had two extra flights into Cairns and is attempting to get a third flight in this afternoon. However, we could, depending on the uh, weather conditions, uh, see some airports uh, close as early as this evening. So uh, all efforts are being made to provide additional flights in uh, this afternoon. Uh, we are also endeavouring throughout the afternoon to put in place arrangements for those people who do need to relocate uh, but who are unable to do so with friends, family or workmates and we will have provided further advice about that uh, mid-afternoon when we have all of the details settled. I'll invite uh, the Deputy Commissioner if he wants to make any further comments and then the Chief Health Officer to add in relation to the hospital. Premier, only that uh, we're very, very pleased that uh, a large number of people have determined to self-evacuate out of the danger areas uh, by, by driving out and taking their families with them. We'd ask that people don't panic by uh, in terms of petrol. Um, there are good supplies of, of fuel in the Cairns and south of Cairns areas. But uh, this raises another issue, and that is of road safety. Please, I'm asking you, those people who are self-evacuating, who are leaving by travelling south out of that area, um, certainly we would like you to uh, be very patient and very careful. Um, the last thing we need is uh, precious resources being uh, utilised in dealing with uh, road uh, squabbles uh, or certainly snarls on our roads. And we have large numbers of traffic police out assisting the volume of traffic to move south and to the west. Thank you. Jeanette. Thank you, Premier. Um, given the information that health has been provided, that there is a real risk that the hospital in Cairns will be inundated with water, we made the decision to err on the side of caution and evacuate all patients from that hospital and the private hospital. We're doing it purely because we think that is the best for those patients given they are amongst the most vulnerable in the community at the time. And we know we can do that safely with the assistance of ADF and we know we have the capacity in Brisbane to take those patients. So I'm confident that that is the right thing to do by those patients. Questions? Can you, sorry, Chief Health Officer, can you just um, explain that the condition that the patients are in that will be transferred? They'll be all of the patients in the hospital, so those will range from intensive care patients through to mothers expecting to give birth, um, through to dialysis patients, coronary care patients, um, neonatal 
patients, some are premature babies, so this children. Is, it, this is the entire hospital. So it's fair to say some of these people will be quite sick? Yes, but we do this every single day in Queensland. We've got a very big state and we move very sick patients around the state all the time, so I'm very confident. No, but that's where we have the capacity with ADF to do so and we'll be putting our doctors and nurses on those planes to move these patients safely. What time will those flights arrive this evening, Lucky? When do you expect? Um, late evening. After 10, 11? At the moment, that's still being worked through logistically. There will be. We'll have a staging um, post managed at the airport so we can manage the numbers that are coming in and then distribute them out to the hospitals How in Brisbane. Um, QAS has got all that in hand. How many patients can be transported in each sort of Hercules aircraft? That's being worked through with ADF at the moment. Uh, current modelling certainly has uh, Cairns as the largest centre likely to be affected uh, by the crossing of this cyclone, uh, but uh, still down south of Cairns, wherever this crosses, the area south of it will be hardest hit, so uh, we're still very concerned into that Cassery Coast area, which is cities or towns like Innisfail, uh, Mission Beach, Cardwell, further into Hinchinbrook and into Townsville. Premier, what about some of the preparations for Palm Island and also remote Indigenous communities? Uh, the uh, mayors of Palm Island, Woodjil Woodjil and Hope Vale have been part of the uh, State Disaster Management hookup and uh, Palm Island has uh, all of the storm surge modelling uh, on the island and has put in place arrangements to ensure that people affected by storm surge can be uh, located into other homes on the island. Uh, similarly, Woodjil Woodjil and Hope Vale and of course Yarrabah uh, uh, west of, uh, sorry, east of Cairns, are all looking right now at the storm surge data and determining what, if any, relocations may need to occur. Uh, Yarrabah, of course, is particularly low-lying and uh, their council is working with the Cairns Council and the Bureau to work through exactly uh, where they need to relocate people to. Has a cyclone crossed any small islands or any landmass at all? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. I think the first thing that we'll see in our area... Uh, the cyclone cross tomorrow will be the uh, Bureau of Meteorology radar station on Willis Island, where there are four Bureau staff who will be gathered in the one cyclone uh, Category 5 proof building, I would suggest. Have there been any enforced evacuations at this stage? No. And do we know how many evacuations there have been? No, we have set up a, a phone line for people to register if they're evacuating, and we'll provide some more information about that this afternoon. But uh, obviously, people are doing this uh, informally. They're going to their mother's place. They're you know, staying with friends. So, no, it's not possible to track exactly how many, uh, but we would uh, be encouraging people later today, once they have relocated, to register and to let police know because their friends and loved ones from around Australia will want to know where they are and we don't want them to be inadvertently listed as missing. What is the traffic like out of there now? Is there problems on the road already? Um, my understanding is that there isn't, but the volumes are growing um, and we are encouraging people to make this decision early. Uh, if they're going to go, now is the time to do it. And we're grateful that people are taking what we consider a quite sensible action in this yeah. regard. Yeah. And you said that uh, this morning that you'd make a decision or a decision will be made by lunchtime today with regard to mandatory evacuation. What's happening with that? Certainly. Um, mandatory evacuation can only be undertaken with the full support of the local councils and their meeting as we talk. In fact, um, I'm hoping to leave here and go and speak to the relevant um, uh, officers and mayors uh, straight after this meeting. So certainly we will have a better idea uh, by the next time we provide you information this afternoon. How far do you have to travel by car south to be out of the danger zone? Well, certainly um, Townsville is going to experience, on current modelling, uh, the equivalent of a low uh, Category 2 cyclone uh, all the way down to about Home Hill, and we're advised that um, Mackay will experience uh, similar conditions to a Category 1 uh, which is similar to what was uh, involved with uh, Tropical uh, Cyclone Anthony uh, just the other day. Uh, so, in reality, we would like people to get as far south as possible, um, uh, quickly as possible, without, of course, breaking the rules. Um, but uh, Mackay is probably a, a target area for the safe, for complete safety. Premier, have you worked out the alternative um, medical arrangements for parents yet? 
Uh, no, I'll invite uh, Janet. Uh, there is a, an, a couple of facilities being looked at, uh, but there is certainly ample uh, emergency staff to provide emergency medical treatment, and that will be available, and we'll be in a position to give more precise information, I would hope, later this afternoon. Yes. Did you have anything to add no, to that's that? That's quite right, Premier. Um, our concern is that um, the Cairns Base Hospital may well be inundated so people can't access it, so we will set up an alternative emergency department elsewhere where we know it won't flood. What hospitals are the, um, are they patients being taken to in the South End? Um, at the moment, we have Princess Alexandra, Royal Brisbane and Women's, the Children's Hospital, um, all on standby, and QE2. Are most of the buildings in Cairns built to withstand a cyclone of this size? Uh, buildings uh, in north and far north Queensland since Cyclone Tracy, buildings built since then, have been required to be built to uh, cyclone standards. So whether they're homes or schools or uh, any other uh, office block, they've been required under the building code to be built to a certain cyclone standard. Obviously, in uh, well-settled areas like Cairns, there are many older homes uh, that will not have been built to that standard, and people who live in them will know that. Uh, that's why we're encouraging them to make sure that they are in the safest place that they can be. If it's not a silly distinction, are you more worried about the wind or the flooding out of this, or is it both families? <laughs> I'm advised that in cyclone events, serious cyclone events around the world, more people are injured or lose their lives in the water that is associated with storm surge uh, than in wind and flying debris, only because people are generally sensible and stay out of the wind and the flying debris. So uh, the, what, in terms of what is more dangerous, it depends on people playing safe and uh, getting out of any area that might be subject to storm surge flooding uh, and staying inside once the serious winds start. These will be highly destructive winds. They will be uh, higher than we experienced with Cyclone Larry and uh, they will be life-threatening if people make it their business to go outside in them. So uh, loss of life and serious injury uh, ultimately will depend in some respects on people being sensible, listening to the warnings, taking advice and not treating this as a tourist event. Uh, it will be a display of the awesome power of nature, but it's not something you want to go outside and watch. How long will you give them before you physically move them out, mandatorily move them out? Um, certainly we hope that most people uh, will move when instructed to do so. And if they don't, what um, was the latest that you will send people in <coughs> to, to shift them? Well, door knocking is, is already starting. Uh, in these areas to warn people and to ask them to move voluntarily. Uh, the mandatory issue uh, comes in when we actually direct them to move. Um, the problem then becomes one of capacity, because if we have large numbers of people who are still in place that we're asking to move, obviously there are, there are practical issues in um, how, do you, how do you actually um, forcibly ask uh, large numbers of people to move when you're moving towards a very dangerous event like this. So there are some really critical uh, factors in the practicality of... So, of so what I'm trying to establish is what's the latest that you can do this? That, that you oh, certainly. Um, this will go on throughout the night if necessary. Um, as we've already said, at about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, on current predictions, it will become uh, dangerous and, and high risk to, to be driving about or walking about or doing anything outside due to the force of the winds that are expected tomorrow morning in the critical areas where the crossing will take so place. So the key time to move is before the light disappears today? Uh, partly, but certainly it doesn't stop us working right throughout the night, and we're capable of doing that. Are you concerned about cyclone watches like during the actual cyclone? Like, will police have to patrol the streets for that reason? Um, it's standard practice that um, all emergency services workers get to a point where they actually shelter in place too. Um, because we don't want them to put their lives at risk. We need them to be available to us immediately, the dangers past, to help deal with the, the post-cyclotic event as well. Is that being stupid enough to go out there on their own? Uh, that's pretty much right, absolutely. I mean, if people go out and purposely go out and get into strife, um, get into some difficult or, or create a high risk, um, sending emergency services workers out into that um, environment is not necessarily uh, practical. Or sensible. Premier, are you still anticipating a 3.30 update? Uh, yes. Will they be more like this evening or are they going to continue? 
uh, we will have an update from the Bureau at five, and uh, I can, I'm already agreed to um, a number of uh, new, live crosses into news with any updated information out of the five o'clock, and there won't be any further updates after that. Not scheduled, but if anything dramatic happened, we would, of course, um, advise you through alerts and other press releases. So, uh, 3.30 here, and then... Uh, Further advice out of the five o'clock state disaster management group where we have the most, that'll be the latest modelling, the last modelling for the day from the Bureau uh, and then uh, no scheduled updates beyond that but then again tomorrow morning at 9.30. And is there any further update from you on the airports and definite times of closures? I hope to have that by 3.30. Thank you.